All right, let's go. All right, all right, all right. What are we going to talk about today, Cindy? Well, I got a question that came from Facebook from a Mike McEwen. Hmm. I wonder if that's your buddy from Colorado. No, I don't think so. You don't think so? Do you know what I told what happened with Mike McEwen? Oh, that's a classic. That's a classic. <laughs> well, I'll tell it. Then you, oh. So you were, we were playing, I think we were playing the Islanders. Yeah. And, no, we were playing Chicago. It was Chicago. And, and you were coaching Colorado, and we were up 3-2. And you kept telling Mike McEwen, who was kind of an offensive defenseman, you're staying on to like, because your big thing was short shifts, right? You were yeah, before short, your time. I, I was before my time. We had short shifts about three quarters of a minute. So you kept saying to Mike, you're, you know, you're staying on too long. Get Keep shorter. Keep shorter. You're staying on too long. So he stayed out long, and he coughed up the puck. Chicago walks in. Bing ties the game up, and he came to the bench, and then you... Uh, well, I hate to say it. I grabbed him. By the front and nailed him up against the glass at the back. Anyhow, that's another story. Yeah, but everything. So anyway, Mike McEwen on Facebook. I don't think it's the Mike McEwen. No, I guess so. Well, it, it, to him, it is. It's maybe Mike it McEwen. Is, yeah, maybe it is Mike McEwen. I think he held. A, I think he'd held a grudge about something like that. Okay, he, this person asks, "Hi, Don. In your opinion, who do you think was the best hockey player in the 1972 Canada versus Russia series?" Well, I wrote all this down. And here it, here's the here's the, the goals. Espo had 13 points in eight games. Sounds pretty good. Not too shabby. Uh, Paul Henderson had 10 points in eight games and three game winning goals. And uh, Bill White, you know, you know, nobody mentions Bill White. And uh, he 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 was plus seven. He was the highest plus in the team. And he scored a game. He, he scored a goal in that six five victory. So a lot of people, City, I don't think who are younger realize what a big deal that was. Yeah, with the democracy going against uh, uh, communism. Right, and it was the first time it was best on best, Russia and yeah. their guys in it. And our guys were not in shape. Because they thought they thought there was going to be a piece, piece of cake. Well, a uh, guy went over there and saw a trade check, and he got married the night before. So, you know, he's not going to be as good. And uh, he said, well, we don't have to worry about the goaltender. <laughs> so what happened was they won the first game, which was, everybody was shocked. Oh, I remember I remember uh, watching that game. It was 8-3, I think, or 8-2 or something. It was unbelievable. And uh, Rose was giving me the... Kind of teasing you. Teasing me. And I said, Rose, just knock it off. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't, just don't tease me anymore. <laughs> or I said, just don't mention it anymore. So Canada lost. So then they won the next one in Toronto. They tied in Winnipeg. They lost in Vancouver. They got booed off the ice in Vancouver. Booed off, and, and that was when Phil did his famous speech. For the people across Canada, we tried. We did our best. And uh, for the people that booed us, geez, I, I'm really, I, all of us guys are really disheartened and we're disillusioned and we're disappointed in some of the people. We cannot believe the bad press we've got, uh, the, the booing we've gotten in our own buildings. And if, if, if the Russians boo their, their players, if the fans, Russians boo their players like some of the Canadian fans, I'm not saying all of them, some of them booed us, then I'll come back and I'll apologize to each one of the Canadians, but I don't think they will. I'm really, really, I'm really disappointed. I am completely disappointed. I cannot believe it. Some of our guys are really, really down in the dumps. We know, we're trying, what the hell? I mean, we're, we're doing the best we can and uh, they got a good team and let's face facts. But uh, it doesn't mean that we're not giving it our 150% because we certainly are. I'll tell you, we we love, I mean, every one of us guys, 35 guys that came out and played for Team Canada, we did it because we love our country and not for any other reason, no other reason. They can throw the money uh, for the pension fund out the window. They can throw anything they want out the window. We came because we love Canada. And even though we play in the United States and we earn money in the United States, Canada is still our home and that's the only reason we come. And I don't think it's fair that we should be booed. Best speech I ever heard. Right, and so going back to Russia, uh, all they had to they lost uh, game five, so they were down, yeah. and so it was the best out of eight. And um, the Russians just had to win or tie one of the next three games. Yeah, and Paul Henderson. Paul Henderson, he came through. 
So we're gonna, we'll do something a little different. We had Paul Henderson on the Grapevine Show. Yeah. And he talks about, uh, this was back in 1987. We shot it at uh, the bar in Hamilton. And um, he, so we had him on the Grapevine Show, and they, we talked about uh, the seventy-two or the seventy-two series, yeah. and, and uh, he talks about his faith. You know, yes, he's very, he does. very, you know, born again Christian. And uh, so we thought we would uh, run that show. Uh, yes. Brian Williams was the other guest that night. We used to do two shows a night. Yes. <laughs> That wore me out. I remember. I remember one time saying, "And now here's one of the greatest hockey players of all time." I had to turn around to see who it was. <laughs> Forget. Yeah, they, we got a little tiresome. So we got. Uh, so here's the uh, grapevine show of Paul Henderson. Let's go. Yes, sir. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> First of all, here's my old buddy Brian Wade on CBC Sports Weekend. Jimmy Loftus here. Jimmy Loftus, smiling at us. I've never knocked a drink over in 20 years. Yeah, and I know. I know where they've gone. <laughs> <laughs> Grapes, I must say this, and I'm sure Brian will agree with me. I really don't remember in football any big standout touchdown. In baseball, you know, you remember the odd home run that was classic. But you never remember real standouts. Right. But Paul Henderson's goal, yeah. I mean, the rest of the world will never forget it. You better believe it. But you know, a lot of people don't realize he had 12 20 goal years in the National Hockey League. I mean, that's when 20 goals meant something. And here's my buddy right now, Paul Henderson, right sure. there. Yes. Okay, the old story, eh? You played 18 years pro and you're remembered for ten, one 10 minute shift. You ever get tired of talking about that goal? No, not really, not anymore. Yeah, everybody comes up everywhere, eh? Yeah, I think so. Most Canadians I meet for the first time will generally tell me where, what they were doing and where they were when I scored the goal. Yeah, I, uh, I, uh, I remember when I, I was coaching Rochester and it was my first year and we didn't have a very good club. So we're out on the ice, and the trainer came running out and said, uh, it's the last two minutes, you know, and the whole deal and everything. The whole team, we had the whole team come in the room. We're all sitting there. Boy, when you scored, we were so happy. We never went back on the ice again. I mean, that, that in Canada, it, was un and it really brought the team together. Like, we were all together. It was unbelievable. It was like when, you remember when Kennedy was shot? Everybody remembers where they were. Yes, I sure do. Yeah, I, um, I, the one goal that you liked the best, though, was the seventh game, eh? the, the one you had there. Well, if I didn't score that goal, the eighth game didn't mean anything. And I mean, well, you saw me play. I never beat two defensemen and, and a goaltender my whole life. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I couldn't even do that in practice. And, uh, and so I, I did beat, two goal or beat both defensemen and uh, beat the goaltender to make the eighth game even uh, worthwhile. Uh, we have a little clip of the, you know, the big one coming up, just a fast one. We've run it so many times, I've run it so many times, Blue's got a little thin. But let, go ahead, Blue, run it a little bit here, go ahead. I'll take, try, describe this. Okay, I, I tried to, the one time that one, of course I got tripped. And it's in my mind, we've, I, was, I got up in a hurry because I didn't think we had much time left. And of course, Phil intercepted it. And when I got it, I just tried to slide it right along the ice, and he uh, got it, and then, but the rebound came right back to me, and it was lights out. Nice pass. Nice pass. <laughs> nice, nice watching those commies roll around with the gold going in. I, I just love it all the time. I just I can't get enough of it like that. Phil, you know, that was Phil's shining moment, too. Uh, and that picture of you and Cornway after, I mean, that, mm. that's probably the most famous picture of all, I think, don't you? Well, I, I guess I would have to agree. I'm in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was your feeling in the very first game? I remember watching the game. I remember you mm -hmm. pumped in on everybody, you know, this is going to be a cakewalk. Yeah. What in the heck was your feeling after the game, after that big loss? 
It was a whole time of reassessing everything. I mean, of course, they had caught us totally by surprise. And we knew, I would say, two shifts into the game that it was not going to be a cakewalk. I mean, they were very composed. And, it was, and we realized there was going to have to be a lot of changes. And there was uh, a few gut checks going on. And, uh, and I, it was really good for Clark Ellis and I because we had really worked hard. We were probably in, in as good a shape as anybody was. And, it was. and I guess that for us, the three of us, it worked out terrific that the Russians were that good. I uh, have to laugh. The report that you got uh, about the goaltender, Trechak, eh? mm. uh, what was that the, to the Leaf uh, guys? Well, I, t I asked him about that. In fact, I, I saw him this summer, and he said that actually he was getting married the next day, which nobody had, uh, we f you know, had forgotten to let anybody know of that, and I think he let eight or nine goals in that night, and so that was the only t they based their opinions on that. Well, but, I, sometimes, uh, you know, after the first night, you do get a little weak, I guess, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> um, but when you scored that goal, Trachek uh, said you were lucky. I like the answer you give him. What, I, I know you don't like to, you like to say it, but would you remember what you give it to him? No, I can't remember that. Oh, I remember. I'll say it. <laughs> said, go to hell. I like this guy right off the bat. But you did come back like I saw. Well, Wayne Cashman come back. He wasn't a mental wreck, but he come back. Remember Wayne when he got uh, helped off the plane? He's a great guy. Um, but you come back, you were pretty, uh, you, were, you were almost a mental wreck there after that goal, eh? Well, I think so. It, it got to be, it was just such an intense time for us. And I mean, uh, that we didn't see anything else in Moscow. We were just, it, we, I was totally wrapped up in beating these guys. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, I was thinking about them the way you think about yeah. them today. I think I've come to respect them more yeah. now. But it was, it was actually war. And it was just, uh, and then, of course, doing it. And, and of course, I, maybe I wasn't used to the limelight that it was, you know, that happened afterwards. So, yeah, it was, it it was a tough time afterwards. What about, uh, what was it like in Russia? I've never been there. Uh, I mean, what was it like? What were the rooms like? In it's that? very Spartan, I would say. Uh, it's just about what you would expect. It's certainly, I, I think their best would probably be a fourth or fifth rate hotel around here. We don't realize how fortunate we are over here. It is, uh, we've, you know, we live in the greatest country in the world. I'll go along and, with that. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really tough. No kidding. Well, what did you guys have to eat? Did you bring your own food, or, or what happened there? Well, we had what they didn't steal. We, uh, they, they, uh, we, had, we had a lot of problems with that also. I remember one morning coming down, and they'd served. They cooked these eggs, and they were green on top. They were actually green on top and burnt black on the bottom. They're putting butter in the bottom of the pan. And Jeez. It, 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 the food was not exciting, to say yeah. the least. How about this Canada Cup? Uh, I, I heard oh. you on the radio. Wasn't that something? Oh, it was incredible hockey. I thought the Sunday night game was the greatest hockey game that's ever been played, especially that first period. There was one icing. The first icing happened the 11 minute mark of the third period. I mean, I, I would not, you know, I'm just not into paying for hockey tickets. I mean, yeah. well, you can get along. I would have paid $200 to see that last game. I mean, Lemieux and uh, Gretzky together are worth, uh, I, I mean, they were incredible. Yeah, what, what, do, you, what do you think makes Gretzky great? Uh... He does it all. I mean, he's got a work ethic like I, I don't know how many. And I really didn't realize how good a forechecker he was. Yeah. I mean, he was in there tying up guys. Uh, and I can't believe, like, he follows the play. Tremendous stamina. I, in my wildest dreams, I'd never have that kind of stamina. It and, just goes and goes and yeah. goes. And uh, Now, you, when you were young, you wanted to be a, a teacher, a uh, high school teacher. Do you have any regrets that you didn't go through for that? No, not at all. I I'd really considered it. My dad was the fellow that stopped me. He says, Paul, if you don't give hockey a, a chance, it'll drive you crazy till the day, day you die, knowing, just in the back of your mind, could I have made it? Yeah. And so I decided to give it two years to see if I could make it, and thankfully I 20 did. Twenty years later, you're still going, eh? Started junior here in Hamilton, right? Yeah, good time, good yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, had some pretty good teammates on that team, Oh, eh? sure did. Um, now, you played in the six-team era. Now, you know, every time you talk to people, the old guys, they say, you know, the six-team era. And then you played in expansion. Now, what's the difference? Like, what was the, what's the difference? Was it better then, or is it better now? What's going on with you? Well, it took all the pressure off you. After the WJ came along, I mean, you get, uh, there was nobody that was going to take your job anymore. Yeah. And I think that it took a lot of the competitiveness out of it. And you know, there was, when there was six teams, there was the, the bottom four guys in the NHL team and the top four or five guys in the, in the American League, very little difference. Yeah. And if you had three bad games, you were history, and the next guy was in there. And so there was tremendous competition for your job, which and the WHA come along or the expansion came along. It just uh, it wasn't there anymore. It wasn't there. Started in Detroit, great teams there when you were there. Oh, yeah. hey, Gordy Howe, woo. Should have won it too. We should have yeah. won two cups, just cried about those. Yeah, and you were in Pittsburgh? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, Good. I was uh, played against you. I would, he played against Rochester. We won it that year. I don't want to say anything. I remember that. <laughs> well, the reason you won it, I had to go to Detroit. That's no, I like this guy. <laughs> You traded to Leafs. You weren't too happy. You didn't really enjoy the, the hockey when you played in the Leafs, did you? Oh, I did initially. Yeah, yeah I really did. But I, uh, I just, I ran a Herald. 
uh, like a lot of guys, and uh, the best thing I ever did was get out of town, go to the WHA. But uh, I'd say the first the first years in Toronto, I really enjoyed. I really did. You, uh, when you were in uh, Atlanta, I remember when you were in Atlanta, you, you were you were playing out your option. They offered you a three-year contract. You turned it down. Big dough. How come? Well, I'd played uh, 18 years. My family, we were living in Birmingham, Alabama. My family liked it there. The kids were in school, about to go to university. And I thought my, you know, my family had sacrificed for me. And uh, so I would have had to go to, uh, to, uh, to Calgary. I yeah. would have had to move the whole family. Yeah. And I decided that uh, yeah. enough was enough. And uh, I, I think it was a good decision. Yeah, I really I enjoyed it. You went out on top. Now, uh, when did you become a born-again Christian? At what time? I uh, became a Christian back in 1975. And... Uh, uh, I mean, why? I mean, I, you know, it's easy to say why here, yeah. but why? Well, a guy asked me a question. He said, you know, if you died tonight, you know where you'd spend eternity. And I, you know, I said, that's, you know, I'm not interested in religion, but I decided to look into Christianity. And I was a guy that went to church on occasion, but I mean, God really didn't mean a hill of beans to me. And so I got a Bible out, read it uh, once, twice, asked a lot of questions, and I become confronted with the fact that Jesus Christ was who he said he was. And I had to make a decision. I didn't want to. I was fearful. I thought, oh, they're going to think I'm a, you know, yeah. one of those religious guys, which I thought they were. But I finally uh, drummed up enough courage in 1975, uh, March of 75, and became a Christian. And uh, best move I ever made, Don, even better than scoring a goal. And so <laughs> I've been a Christian for 12 and a half years, and uh, I just enjoy it immensely. Well, that's great. You know, some owners in the National Hockey League uh, say that, you know, they, the born-again Christians lose their aggressiveness or something like that. Do you believe that? Well, I think if you watch Boschman and Ryan Walter and yeah. oh, Mike boy. Gartner uh, yeah. and uh, Mark Osborne, I think there's some pretty good examples Jeez, yeah. of guys go there and play. There's four guys, uh, probably the most aggressive guys. I don't know where that came from. I, I don't know what happened. Like in, when they were in uh, Atlanta, I think something happened there that uh, turned the owners off or something. But, I mean, you take those guys. They're the four of the toughest guys in the league. Mm -hmm. Great guys, too. They have something when you talk to them. I'll, I'll give you an illustration. Brad Horning in Regina last year uh, broke his neck. And I asked everybody in, in the Canadians, uh, Chris Nile and my buddy went and got, a, mm -hmm. got it and sent it out, Claude Mouton. And everybody, you know, mm -hmm. God love them. They put in there, good luck, Brad, and everything. Ryan Waller, you know, wrote a little note on it and give the Bible. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, something like that really means something to a lot of people, doesn't it, when mm -hmm. you do stuff like that? It sure does. And, and I went to see him, and you know who he talked about coming to see him was you. You're kidding. Yeah. Holy yeah. Hmm, you know that. <laughs> but he, he, you feel sorry when you see something yeah. like that. And yeah. uh, You know, your ranch. Tell me about your ranch that you have. Uh, I was out there with Lynn Zimmerman. I'm going to tell you a story. But tell me about the, the ranch first. Well, first of all, it's not my ranch. Well, you it's, know, uh, it's Mel Stevens at Team yeah. Ranch. And he was the guy that was instrumental in, in, uh, in helping me through this or going through the process. But, of course, I've become very attached to it and uh, still spend some time up there in the summertime. Uh, Davey Burroughs actually is up there in full-time staff right now. Ronnie Ellis has been heavily involved uh, in the past also. Well, you know, I, I'm going to tell you about Lynn Zimmerman, and I, I'm not saying anything behind his back because he's, he's a friend of mine now, but he played for me and uh, in Rochester. Mm -hmm. And i got to tell you, without a doubt, when he was playing, he was the biggest jerk I ever met in my life. Honestly, <laughs> that's the truth. You never met a bigger jerk than Lynn Zimmerman, I'm telling you. And he used to just drive me nuts, you know. He just, uh, I'll give you an illustration. We had a, they had a big fire in the Holiday Inn one time, and uh, so we're having a, like, a get-together with the owners and all that. You know what he did? He puts a fire alarm off. They had a, I mean, that's the kind of guy he was. But, you know, so I, I never spoke to him after a playoff. So I was so mad at him. I said, you'll never play pro again. I'll see you. You'll never play pro again. And I saw him last year. I went up the ranch, and I'm telling you, this guy is unbelievable now. I mean, he, it's like night and day. I mean, does, right. does that always happen when a, when a guy, I mean, when that happens? Well, uh, you're on the hit list, so we'll, you, you can tell the people another four or five years probably. You and Harold. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I never forgot that. When I saw him, I, I yeah. was driving home with my wife. Oh, yeah. I said, I can't believe the change in that oh, guy. Yeah. I think so. I think if a, if a guy's an idiot before he becomes a Christian, he'll be an idiot for a yeah. while afterwards. But in due time, I mean, it's uh, God does change it. I, 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 you know, I'm, yeah. I'm changed in so many areas that is uh, incredible. And and uh, and, and I, I really believe, Don, that God made us. He knows how we function best. Yeah. But I just wouldn't listen before, and I went out. I tried everything on. You know, I got 32 years of experience on the other side of the fence. Yeah. So that's not bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I got 12, uh, I got 12 years of 12 and a half on this side, and so I, uh, there's no comparison. When you were young, did you, you know, growing up, and uh, did you, do you have any heroes when you were growing up? Oh, sure, Gordie Howe. Good. Are you kidding? I, I was a right winger, and I thought uh, Gordie Howe was my, uh, I can still remember the first time I went to, uh, to training camp, 
and uh, got in the big club, and I sat across there. And I mean, I would have played for nothing just to sit in the same room as him. He's a, do you think he's the greatest hockey player who ever lived? Well, that's hard to say. I, uh, you know, it's uh, a lot of great ones, Orr yeah. and Gretzky, and uh, now I think just Lemieux. I mean, he uh, Lemieux is incredible in that series. I just, I, I, I really didn't think he was that good. No, he, Lemieux can play when he wants mm. to play. I call him the biggest floater in the world. But uh, mm. when he wants to play, no. boy, he can play. Everywhere I go, they say, what do you think of Lemieux now? Yeah. Oh, we said he could play. I just had to straighten the kid out. Well, Paul, we're going to go over the bar. I know you don't like going over the bar. He's just going over to have a soft drink. Talk to Jimmy and Brian. Put her there, Paul. Oh, Come on, like that. <laughs> that was great. Hey, back, hey. Soft drinks, that's all. Soft drinks. Delighted, yeah. to, delighted that you're here, Paul. Good to be uh, here, Jimmy. I wanted to ask you this question. I think it's very important for the young players today. What advice would you give them, up-and-coming young kids? I would say enjoy the game. I, I think they get far too serious about this game, uh, far too early. Go out mm -hmm. there and just have a good time. What advice would you give their parents? Leave them alone and let them play. I, I think that... Uh, Three, I'm going yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. You worked here at Channel 11, didn't you? That's right. Right. Uh, play junior hockey. Yeah, you. Uh, how come you never don't get on television? Good-looking guy like you, like myself, you know. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm very content. I wouldn't change jobs anybody in the whole world. Well, that's that's good. You know, Brian, and my old buddy Brian. I sure do. Brian, you were in uh, Russia in '72, eh? We go back a long way. I was covering it for Chum Radio in 1972. Remember the blizzard? We all went over there with yeah. summer loafers and raincoats, and it snowed. The thing I remember most, though, was that final goal. Uh, we all but. I'd given up on you, but uh, we'd screamed ourselves hoarse. We figured it was going to be a tie. The goal was so amazing. After the goal, Jim Hunt, who's now writing for the Toronto Sun. Remember you were being interviewed in TV down at the end. Hunt wanted to get to Paul. There was about eight big Soviet policemen. And a guy walked up to Hunt, who's about 6'5", and he says, Nyet. And Hunt, as only shaky can do, said, What do you mean, Nyet? And knocked the guy down. The guy fell down. The guy was so surprised that Hunt shot past him, they didn't do anything. We all walked past the policemen. They opened up for us, and we interviewed Paul. It's a great goal, I'll tell you. If you could change one thing in hockey, what would you change? I'd take out the red line and make the ice surface bigger. That right, Ian. Yeah, guys are getting so big and strong, and I think they, they need more room to, to maneuver out there. I can't, I hate that clutching and grabbing. It drives me crazy. You know, that's only came, that only came in, say, in the last seven years. Uh, uh, Philly was the guy that started that. It was Ross Lonsbury. Uh, remember Ross Lonsbury? He was the guy that put the hook on everybody, and, and, and they won, you know, so that's the way they went. I agree. You went a year, well, you didn't go a year, half a year, I think, in Pittsburgh in the minors. Now, you see these kids coming up 18 years old. You know, it must be awful tough on them. Do you think that helped you in the minors? Well, I needed the time. I think, like, I only, I, I didn't have artificial ice, and 14 games was most I ever played till I got to, to junior hockey. And so uh, I, I was getting ice time down there. In fact, I enjoyed it. When, when Detroit asked me to come up, I didn't want to come. I said, just leave me here for the year and let me get some ice time. But I came up after Christmas and uh, basically killed penalties. I, it was far more enjoyable than the minors. You, you had to feel sorry for guys like me. I just kid me. But in, back in those days, you saw hockey players down there just rotten down there. Never got a shot, didn't they, right? Yeah, and they were good hockey players, real good hockey players. Just, and anyway, I think it was being in the right place at the right time and being in the wrong organization, you got buried. And, uh, and, it, and I think that was one of the good things of the expansion. A lot of good hockey players did get to play in the NHL. Now, I want you to take your time, and I want you to explain something uh, uh, that I don't think has really been explained in anywhere on TV, in the paper. And I read it, and I've read it about it in the paper, and I get, you know, confused there. Tell us who you've gone to see, athletes in action. Tell us right the whole deal on that thing so we'll understand. Okay, it's, it's simply a Christian organization. Now, I became a Christian in 1975, and a Christian is simply someone that accepts Jesus Christ for who he says he is and realizing we need a Savior. And so I, as an act of my will, invited the Lord Jesus Christ into my life as my Lord and Savior. When I did that, you get spiritual life. We say we're born physically, and then when you do that, you have spiritual life. And that's where you're reborn. I hate that term, yeah. but the, it's, that's what it is. And so reborn simply means that you have a spiritual life. Uh, the Bible says, he who has the Son has the life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have the life. And so, I mean, even a hockey player can understand that. Yeah. 
Unless the Lord Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> look, a guy look like Hoggy looked at me. Look at that. That's all, look at that. <laughs> so that's all, that's all a Christian is, someone that accepts the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you accept him on his terms, not our terms, like what I used to do. I mean, I used to go to hockey. I, I used to go to a lot of the, with the Catholic guys. I'd, I'd go to church. But I mean, I might as well stay at home because God didn't mean a hill of beans to me. Well, this athlete in action now. Tell us okay, about now we, that's all we do. We go in and we run Bible studies. We work with the Blue Jays, the Tiger Cats, and the Argonauts, and we simply get the Bible out. And what does it say? And we try to, we share with them, and we don't, we don't try to jam it down anybody's throat, but we try to, would you take a look at it? Now, I, I work with a lot of uh, business executives also. In fact, uh, right here in Hamilton, we got a group that meets 6.30 on Thursday mornings, a dozen guys right down at the Y at 6.30. Same thing, a couple of guys are lawyers. Uh, a couple of guys own their own business, and so we just, what does the Bible say and try to line up our lives with that? And I find it to be the most exciting life in the world. And you've got some, like we talked about, Gartner. I mean, you saw him play yeah. in the, uh, in, I mean, that guy's a solid Iraq, yeah. and he's a man's man. Walter Payton. And hockey, is, hockey has been the real slow end of it. Like uh, I, baseball, like the, the Tigers have about, uh, you know, the Tigers have 10 Christians on the team. Tanana, who, you know, won the, the final game for them. A solid, solid Christian. Big in football, though, Paul. Oh, yeah, I'd say football. Yeah, the football NFL. is the... Yeah. But a lot, of the, a lot of the football players come out of the deep south, out of the Babel yeah. Belt, and it's not, a, it's not a ritual to them. They understand who God is. They've been brought up in families, and, uh, and up here, we just don't look into it. Like, I never looked into it. Well, I, I know uh, in training camp this year in Winnipeg, uh, Doug Smale's a born-again yeah. Christian, too, and he was out in the ice uh, getting beat up by a guy, and Laurie Bossman <laughs> jumped over and went at him, and he says, and one of the guys sitting beside him, he says, look, he says, you can't beat up in God's gang, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and, yeah, and he didn't. Put it there, Paul. Thank Thanks you. so much for coming on. We're all proud of you. I'll tell you that. Blue, take us home. Take us home, Blue. I was good. Take us home. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Well, I'll tell you, Dad, those shows were a lot of fun for uh, everyone else but you. They were under a lot of pressure. They were not, they're not no, they were not for fun for me. Yeah, yeah. But, but they uh, were good shows, and nobody's ever copied that, where you taped in front of a live audience, because the live audience really makes the show. Yeah. Because they are so, like when Paul Henderson was talking, they, they were hanging on every word he was yeah. saying about the 72 series. And now they just have, you know, some person interviewing them in a room. And there's yeah. like, it's dead, right? But when you had the show, it was really, really well, lively. Sydney and Dad, we like to thank our sponsors, NorthstarBets.com. It's a Canadian-owned and one of the best places to play in Canada. It has everything you're looking for with slots, live dealer tables, sports books with built-in sports betting insight and analysis and listeners who have already have an account with spreads.ca which was their original name you don't have to do anything just sign in to northstarbets.com northstarbets.com has an exclusive offer to our listeners if you sign up and deposit with the promo cherry North Star Bets will match your first bet up to 100 bucks, and you get 100 bonus spins on the big wheel. It's a limited time offer while quantities last and not available in Ontario, and we'd like to thank them very much for all their help with the Don Cherry Pet Rescue Foundation. Let me ask uh, this a question from Twitter and from Tiger Stripe one and there's a really good point that people probably don't even believe. Why is Paul Henderson not in the Hall of Fame? And Trey Chat's in. <laughs> we'll figure that. Yeah, I figure Trey Chat's yeah. in the Hall of Fame, and Paul Henderson is not. Paul Henderson had three consecutive game-winning goals when if they tied or lost, the series was over. Yeah. And I, I, it I, scored I, maybe the biggest goal in hockey history. I have no idea. The only uh, thing I can think of is that... Uh, I don't even know. I, 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 you can't, I can't think up an excuse. I can't think of an excuse. Who are these Einsteins that uh, figure who's, who's in and who's out? Yeah. But you're not in it either, Dad, so you're in well, good I don't, company. Well, I, I don't expect I'll ever get in. <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing with Chechak. He led in 13 goals in the last three games. Can you imagine if Toronto's up 3-1? Yeah. And they they lose they lose in seven games and their goalie gives up thirteen goals in the last three games. They'd run him out on a rail. Yeah. Well, and Trechek they put into because the goes reality into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, because the reality is when Trechek faced be, best on best, his record wasn't that good. Like he was good when in the middle of the seasons they'd come over and play the NHL teams and the coaches were just saying 
to just don't get hurt, right? Yeah, don't, don't. And, and, yeah. But when that was, you know, the best on best, and they were training and they were ready to go, his record really is not that stellar. I have no idea why the Paul Henderson is not in the t- uh, in the Hockey Hall of Fame. It, there, there is no reason that he's not in the Hockey Hall of Fame. 